then there's love spread your wings love spread your wings come fly away with me in your dreams leave them all behind your troubles and your cares you don't need them soaring up above the sleeping world below floating just the way we want to be you can take me anywhere i'll follow to endless sea you and me love spread your wings come fly in your dreams together with me in this wondrous place we can be so free together i know we can be just who we want to be find a peace and joy and maybe start again again with no one but each other in endless sky you and I. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Soaring up above the sleeping world below, floating just the way we want to be. You can take me anywhere I'll follow to endless sky, you and I. Love, spread your wings, come fly in my dreams, together with me. Leave your cares below, gathering dust on earth while we float above, together Love, spread your wings. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Thank you. And this song I've uh, co-written with uh, Bill Thibodeau, and it's called Your Birthday. I don't know where the miles have gone Where the hours have risen and lain These beds of earth that I've rested upon Have been washed like seats in summer rain I pray for strength to wrestle the snow While leaves of autumn color my brain As days turn to seasons I need to know have I missed your birthday again? Did you pour yourself a tall glass of wine? Turn to the window and whisper a name. It'll be alright if it's all in my head. Have I Yet do you wonder while the moon turns red While the wind sounds familiar Like a passing train See the glow of a vagrant fire That warms your cup with its low blue flame 
Does your home fire heat match my world desire? Have I missed your birthday again? Did you pour yourself a tall glass of wine? Turn to the window and whisper a name. It'll be alright if it's all in my head. Have I missed? Have I missed your birthday? Have I missed your birthday again? Did you pour yourself another glass of wine? Turn to the window and whisper a name. You've had your life to live and I've had mine. Thank you. Happy birthday, Ellen. Thank you, Cheryl. I wrote this poem about 10 years ago, and it's as relevant then as it is today. <clears throat> my conscience, my country. Give us your tired, your hungry, your poor, those willing to earn their citizenship. Give us America's tired, hungry, and poor, those that cannot fend for themselves, so that all may become educated and self-reliant. To be under one, many, or no God, part of the Pledge of Allegiance, not its shadow. In the land of the free, in the home of the brave, how could we ever let any man be slave? How could the icon of American liberty be a woman who could not vote. Standing before the ark of American liberty, feel the footsteps of your ancestral people, taking their first step in freedom. Shed cheers of joy for everyone taking their first step, overshadowed by clarity of heartache. For little boys and little girls, mothers and fathers who took their first step without the hand of the other. If we believe all men and women are created equal, then why are some born into upper-class educated families and others into abject poverty? It's not our culture that brings us here. It's having culture. It's not anyone's culture. It's everyone's culture. When government fails to meet this objective, it is the responsibility of the people to alter, change, institute new, organized in a manner to better serve our safety and happiness. Freedom is hard. Equality is harder. Morality is unrelenting. Give us all tired, hungry, and poor whose vocabulary is void of the word convenient. All tired, hungry, and poor to be inspired with confidence so they will no longer suffer. Under the pains and penalties of morality, may these words better serve Lady Liberty and all of mankind. Thank you. Um, after many, many years in the electronics and uh, computer industry, I have been working part-time for the last six months or so at a private school in Rhode Island. And as a poet, I have gone in a few times and given poetry classes and shared stories with uh, some of the students. And recently, I did a, a, a class where we talked about 
father and son relationships throughout history. And I wrote a poem after that called Cherished. Um, actually, before I read the poem, I handed out uh, little pieces of paper to everybody and asked the kids to put a tick or a cross on the piece of paper and hand it back anonymously, saying whether they'd had a positive or negative experience with their father. And I got about, th out of a class of 30, I got about uh, 30 or 40 percent were crosses, which was very sad. Cherished. I wanted to pick you up and hold you, tell you that you were cherished. With some of you, I could tell even without the ticks and the crosses, the slips of paper handed back. X marked the spot on the paper, and X also marks the spot in your heart where you feel unloved, ignored, no soul connection for you, but anger and frustration not gentleness. For most, it has been that way for generations, not just in families, but in business, in life. It is the way of the human, the patriarchy. It can be changed, but the change must come from within. In time, you will cherish yourself. You will make that soul connection to self and others. No hourglass crimping for you, just energy and the sands of time flowing freely between your head and your heart, between you and me. Being cherished is never found out there in the man-made world, the people's construction, the pyramids of want. It resides <sighs> inside and with those that know how to connect at the spirit level. Cherish those times, those people. I won't need to pick you up then, for you will be picking yourself up, you and your friends, all light and lightness. Thank you. Hope is the feeling to keep inside of you. Love is the answer with our words and with what we do. Peace is the vision we must imagine near. Keep these three words in your heart clear. Hope, love, peace is the way hope love peace is the way we say hope love peace is the way hope love peace is the way if you've been unkind made someone mad or you try to get even make them more sad if you're feeling isolated misunderstood just remember these three words to feel good again remember these three words to feel good hope love peace is the way hope love Peace is the way we say hope, love. Peace is the way, hope, love. Peace is the way. If the world feels too heavy to bear in your soul and your heart is on empty and you feel far from home, if you're feeling angry, confused, and alone, just remember these three words to come home to yourself. Remember these three words to come home. Hope, love, peace is the way. Hope, love, peace is the way we 
say hope, love, peace is the way. Hope, love, peace is the way. Yes, hope, yes, love, peace is the way three words thank you uh, this is called what the dog dragged in <laughs> it's uh, actually I'm doing a collection of dog poems and this is one of the more political ones what the dog dragged in the naysayers called him dangerous, this elegant man and his family, or doubted his birth as if an Al-Qaeda operative took office, while for the rest of us, a burden lifted, a pride restored, and for once we stopped yelling at the times. But it was too late with hardwood creaking under our feet plasterboard cracking on the ceiling below. Still, we thought, ignore it. The house will outlive us, old as we are with bad eyesight and arthritic joints. Then, last spring, when ice on the lake thawed, broke up, sounding mournful as heartbroken teenagers sighing through the night in a half fog, the way we feel our obligations and legacy to the young. And along the path through the woods, crystals of gray snow shrunk into itself, while the heat of the earth below released its fragrance, sending something wild in the dog. We watched in revulsion a history repeating itself, but where she dug the thing up, I do not know. The smell wretched, stinking across the many continents. Maggot infested, I was sure. The old crow, or what was left decomposing or buried there dormant in the fabric of our constitution and the way she carried it in her teeth wholly unbroken revealing it to us as the death smell filled the house and rotten eyes looked up at us and I don't recall scolding the dog as she pranced about almost laughing, which is what I remember now during the 45th transition of power, gagging as we are and frightened, running around with rags and disinfectant as the helicopter lifts off. Babel. We were there before the falling heard one another clearly, every nuanced meaning, all the tiny spaces in between. Even our sighing held us together in understanding. I still feel your breath in my ear, still hold the weight of your beating heart close to my chest, the place I feel you best. But then the warning came and then the curse and we were scattered to the four winds and over every sea. Your words became whispered confusions then, and I to you fell mute. Our communiques and confessions lost to the wars that raged among men. When will we ever understand again? Words lost forever over every sea, and there went you, and here stands me. Be kind. So I wrote this piece recently and, and decided it didn't need music, and so I don't have music or a soundtrack. And it's inspired, and I use that word very loosely, by current events, this bizarre state that we're in as a country, as a world. So it goes like this. 
What do we do now? I'm not talking about executive orders or visa policies. I'm talking about our focus. What is it that captures our attention? What is it that pushes our buttons? What is it that lights our fire? Let me switch to the first person because I believe now is a time for me to take the steering wheel of my karmic vehicle with my eyes open, with my mind clear, and with my heart ready to receive and to give. It is critical. You, me, I, we, and the path to arrival, completion, a, a satisfying life is present in the now. All the contingencies converge at this moment. You, me, I, we, look around and listen. Hey, there's a guy standing in front of you spewing words, standing on a stage spewing words. Is that what you want? Words? Well, how about this? Words become birds. Flying in a formation past the edge of the frozen winter. Or a radiant blue jay, its feet grasping the branch of a budding spring branch. Paint a picture, the vibrant interaction of glorious fauna and flora, birds and butterflies fluttering through, bursting a field bursting with petals, colorful testimony to the evocation of evolution in natural splendor. Pose a counter to this con conundrum of political agendas that define our speech patterns and circumscribe our scenarios. Partisan posturing is irrelevant to the DNA's, to DNA's imperatives. We are here by intention of something that is beyond our comprehension. We are the dream of the greater beyond. Thank you. Uh, in the late 60s, um, I was in the Army, I was trained in the infantry, and eventually worked at the Pentagon and overseas. And I worked with a lot of guys and trained with a lot of guys who wound up going to Vietnam. In the late 70s, they were having a five-year reunion of the U.S. leaving Vietnam, a lot of documentaries, a lot of stories. And after a lot of conversations with friends of mine who were veterans, I wrote the following poem, and this is the first time I read it in 40 years. He marched to their song. The boy stands tall in his greens. He looks different without blue jeans. They say he's a man now, but let me ask you how. Is it because he's 17? They gave him a gun and taught him to fight, but still he doesn't know if it's wrong or right, so he just marches on singing their song. And from each night's glory, there stands a people to jury whose fervent eyes watch each remark, waiting for the light in the dark, but only get sounds that are so blurry. The shots ring out in a fury, each tracer, a guiding star. The music never ends, it's never too far. He just marches on, wondering who's right or wrong. The bursting shells keep him awake, but do not drown him from his fate. It makes it harder to tell whether or not he's living in hell. And with each passing day, he awakens to pray, his soul to keep and not to sell. He just marches on until the days are gone. Days to weeks of mud and rain, a living torture of endless pain, of bodies and machines all mixed together as fighting and killing continue through all kinds of weather. The slave serves his master with silent nods and roads a joint faster. The pills and dope hide reality in hopes that soon will be a finality. So homeward bound he limps, no more army, dopers or pimps. He'll just march on until the memories are gone. Now five years have gone by, oh God, how he worked and tried, but it's those nightmares, vacant hollow stairs that haunt him. He much, much, he must march on. Will he forget the death and sorrow? He screams at night 
afraid of tomorrow, and jerks his body awake at night in cold sweat, shaky hands to follow. He'll try to march on. And it's the flashes of his past, carrying images of death that shake him, of faceless bodies, of smoldering babies, that is his bequeath. He voyages each night, and everywhere there's blood, 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 the smells, smother his nostrils, the sounds deafen his senses and make him alone. How can he be so strong? Opportunity awaits you, you'll see, long lines of unemployed, that was what, that's what was to be. Some vets flocked to schools, but most hung around just played pool. Those who make it might survive. All the others will just hear jive. Sorry, no help wanted. Is his soul haunted? You just don't have enough education. He thought there was emancipation. We're looking for someone with skill, but all he knows how to is kill. Won't someone take a stance? Why is the road so long? People avoid him because he fought. Old army buddies advertised to be sought. Mockery and pity crowd people's faces. They try to erase all the traces. They've become a forgotten lot. Is it worth marching on? They march down Fifth Avenue for the class of 41. What price glory, he asks you. Is it because they won? Or should he have surrendered his body too? Darkness blinds his mind today. Everyone wants him to repay. Bring home the boys, but don't say you did our dirty work. Just pray that they move along and don't stay. The marching goes on. Someday their consciences will be cleansed and hopefully he'll find his end. Until that day, he'll seek his friends while he continues to march along. Endless hours of that tragic song, Oh God, What Went Wrong. Thank you.